can't do business with Hitler. We are now at war. There are but two alternatives, total victory or total defeat. There can be no such thing as a military stalemate that would result in the survival of Hitlerism. That is the opinion of a man who knows. Douglas Miller, for 15 years, commercial attaché to the American Embassy in Berlin. Presenting a radio series entitled, You Can't Do Business with Hitler. Episode 7, The Thousand Year Right. This is Douglas Miller speaking. Hitler plans his new order to last for a thousand years. To realize the thousand-year rank, he must seize the means of education in the occupied countries and adapt them to this end. By restricting higher education to a small class of ruling German, scientific and technical knowledge will soon die out among the slave people. After a generation, they will be unable to use the tools of modern science as their own. They will sink into complete dependence upon the master race. This scientific slave state is not a dream. It is taking place before our eyes. For instance, in Belgium, the first step of Hitler's education for slavery program has been the assignment of Nazi professors to sit side by side with the Belgian people. Class, class, please come to order. This is our first class since the recent armistice. Many things have changed since we last met. I caution your young minds not to be alarmed with these <laughs> changes. Herr Notabast? Immediately, Professor. We will continue our study of history in the usual fashion. But before we begin, I must introduce Professor Gruwald from the University of Homburg, who will attend all of our recitations. Professor Gruwald. Enough. You may begin, Herr Notabat. Then let us review our discussions to the point where they were broken off by hostilities. Jerome, you will begin? Yes, Professor Notabat. I will. Uh, one moment, young man. Hereafter, all education is dispensed by the benevolence of the right. Hereafter, you will express your gratitude by saluting the Führer. You will also ask my permission to recite. Herr now you may proceed. Heil Hitler. I believe our last discussion concerned the war. That period of history Enough. was... Have you not just lost the war? Is it fit that you should discuss it? I refer to the First World War, 1914 to 1918. You are positive? Positive. Proceed. The discussion of 1914 can do no harm. Proceed. In August 1914, Belgium was invaded by the armies of the Kaiser. No! But you just said. Ah, all that has been corrected as the true facts reveal themselves. In August 1914, Belgium was invaded by the French. Pardon me, Herr Grohl, but it was the Germans. My book. Give me your book. Yes, sir. Herr Notenberg, this is the book used to teach history in this school? Yes. It will be used no longer. Yes, Herr Grohl. I myself will teach the history learned here. The true history of the First World War. Not the lying democratic Jewish interpretation of world events. Jerome. Yes, sir. How old are you? Thirteen, sir. I see. You are badly instructed. Don't you know that two times in 25 years, Germany has had to save Belgium from the French? I have been taught differently. Each time the French have made a bloody battlefield of Belgium soil. Yet my book says... Your book is full of lies. Soon you will have a new book. Your book full of truth. But Herr Notabot is... Ah, Herr Notabot is a dumb cop. A stupid jackal who knows nothing about history. Is it not so, Herr Notabot? I do not think there's anything to be gained by... Is question. it not so, Herr Notabot? Yes. You see, Jerome, Herr Notabot has been lying to you. Why have you been lying to your students, Herr Notabot? Tell them. I... The truth. It was because you were in the pay of the French and the English and the Americans, yes? You like your position, Herr Luther? Surely you have heard of the Gestapo. You were in their pay. Yes, I was in their pay. You told their lies. I told their lies. Germany is the protector of Belgium. Germany is the protector of Belgium. <laughs> Jerome? Is it true, Herr Nuttall? It must be, Jerome. Yes. It must be. We must have a new book. Good. Now we will proceed with the instruction. Germany had been forced to save Belgium from the French how many times in the past 25 years? 
Germany has been forced to save Belgium from the French two times in the past 25 years. History proves it. Nor is this scene any different from hundreds of others taking place all over Nazi Europe. Hitler will stop at nothing to make the people of the occupied countries accept his new order as inevitable. You don't have to take my word for it. If you need proof, consult the authoritative Reveille's book, Foils of Europe, page 82. The best evidence of all, however, lies in the words of Adolf Hitler himself. And I quote Rosnig's book, Voice of Destruction, page 42. Complete freedom of choice in education is the privilege of the elite and of those whom they have specially admitted. All thought must be subject to continental control and election. We must, therefore, be consistent and allow the great mass of the lowest order the blessing of illiteracy. All thought must be subject to continual control and selection, so says Adolf Hitler. How? By perverting education, by educating for slavery, by destroying knowledge at its source, by forbidding the publication and reading of technical and scientific matters. What happened in Paris in July 1940 is typical and may be cited as an illustration of how Hitler is blacking out the brains of Europe. Herr Reinich? Yeah? I am Robert Dessel. This is André Bernstein, Parisian book publisher. So we were told at the propaganda staffel that we must have your approval to publish my book. You have made out the proper application papers? I have them here. You have a copy of the manuscript? Yes, right here. Hmm. Now, according to the application papers, you are Robert Dessel. Age 46. By occupation, a social scientist. And you have written a book about the economic considerations of nationalism. Is that correct? Exactly stated. I have made a very thorough study of the causes and effects of economic nationalism. I have devoted 15 years to the study. It's a good book. Herbenstein, you have read this book? I have read it several times. You wish to publish it? It's an important work. I did not ask your critical opinion. Do you wish to publish it? It meets with your approval. Good. Now, where is the chapter on Jews? Jews? The chapter on Jews. All books dealing with economics must have a chapter on the Jewish influence. But this is a book about nationalism and not strictly about economics. There must be a chapter about Jews. Well, there is none. Then you will have to write one. But there is nothing to say. Think of something. Invent it. Otherwise, your book cannot be published. Now, where are the chapters about the Führer? I'm sorry, I don't understand. The chapter's about Hitler and his contributions to the economic, political, and religious magnificence of the new order. But this book is about... Ah, the... I know what the book is about. Where are the chapters? I want to see them. There are none. Then your book is not very comprehensive, is it, Herr Dessau? Fifteen years. Research. Study. I thought it was comprehensive. Obviously, it is not. If you have no chapters on these two important social ideas of our time, what do you have? Perhaps you will let me speak. Perhaps. Do you know the book better than its author? He is too upset to speak. Very well. He has made some very profound comments on the effect of high tariff on nationalism, showing how it makes a country self-sufficient, imperialistic, and inclined to be warlike. That part will have to be deleted. It but has no bearing on the Nazi new order. But I already told you. That part will have to be cut out. But it's over half the book. There's the material on Germany's reasons for reaching out to the East. Herr Orton, take it off. But that leaves only about a quarter of my work left. Yeah, what is that about? Several old ideas. It is not the good. You may publish them. There's no point. Why not? You have one quarter of a book. Add one or two chapters on the Jews and uh, a dozen on the contributions of the Führer to the magnificence of the new order, and you have a book. It is done, no? Fantastic. Need proof? Then see Reveille's book, Spoils of Europe, page 85, and read for yourself the amazing story of Hitler's book, Purge. How he not only refuses publication of civilized thought, but how he suppresses practically every book ever written that dares imply Hitler is wrong. Obviously, however, Hitler cannot force the adults of the countries he has conquered to forget what they already know, but he takes every precaution that none of that knowledge is passed on to the children. The punishment is death if an adult interferes with a child's Nazified education. Oh, you wanted to see me, Herr Streicher? You are still a professor at the university, I believe. Yes. 
Until recently, your son Jacques has been an excellent student under our tutelage. He has been most intelligent in understanding our new order. But yesterday, yesterday he showed an inclination to doubt a statement in Mein Kampf. Would you happen to know why? Well, he's still my son. I still have the right to teach him the truth. I assure you that from now on, his education will rest completely in our hands. Tomorrow he leaves for the same school in our class with our repatriated German youth. Where is he now? Mueller, bring in the boy. If you think you can take my son away and drum faucet into his head, you'll find you're wrong. He's still a Frenchman. You will see. Oh, hello, father. Be still. I'm, I'm sorry. Heil Hitler. Jacques, I believe your father tried to incite you with rebellion by telling you yesterday that Mein Kampf was a pack of lies. Let the child alone. I did tell him. I would rather hear it from your son's own lips. Speak, Jacques. I, I forget. We will refresh your memory, Jacques. We will show your father how infinitely superior our new training is to French training. First, race, the basic, the fundamental. Remember what the Fuhrer says, Jacques? Uh, I don't remember. Everything we admire on this earth Everything we admire on this earth, science, art, technique, and invention, everything is only the creative product of a few people, and perhaps only one. You see what a fine scholar he will be in time? Uh, the boy is simply a parrot. Silence. Second, Jock. The master race. Go on, Jock. There are inferior people and, su and superior people. I am... I am not German. I am not German. Therefore, I am an inferior person. Jacques, you don't believe that. Tell him you don't. You see how apt he is, Herr Bovey? What kind of disease are you putting into my boy? He's French. This is the new education, Herr Bovey. You barbarism. Enough. You know. Arrest Herr Bovey on my order. Take him away. Father! Don't worry, Jacques. Don't worry. Tell the truth always. Tell the truth. What are you going to do to Father? Let me go. Let me go. Here's a sentiment. Here's belong to a weak and inferior race. Stop crying. Stop crying. Your father is inferior. You know that, Jacques. Repeat that, Jacques. My, my father is inferior. Again. My father is... is Unbelievable? No. Jacques is only one of thousands of children all over Europe who have been exposed to the Nazi premise, a standard textbook for all children of school age, the same textbook from which the foregoing theme is derived. You can read it for yourself. This textbook, along with fanatical lectures by Nazi teachers, forms a basis of child education in the occupied country. And thus, for future generations, the perverted, warped Nazi philosophy becomes a means of training them to be slaves and to make them like it. We of America must not be too late in freeing Europe, or these children will be lost forever. You can't do business with Hitler. <laughs> You have been listening to the seventh program in a series entitled, You Can't Do Business with Hitler, in which Douglas Miller, America's greatest expert on Nazism, reveals the complete details of Hitler's plan to conquer and enslave the world. Listen for the next episode entitled, The Living Dead. This transcribed broadcast, written by Elwood Hoffman and produced by Frank Telford, was brought to you by the radio section of the Office for Emergency Management in Washington. <laughs>